Hey everyone, in this video, I'll show you a simple technique that you can use to make easy loaders such as these. There's a link to the source file in the video description if you'd like to follow along. You can either download the file or use the open and ride button if you just want to get into the file, poke around, see how the keys are set up or anything like that. So with that being said, let's hop into it. Now all of these loaders, um, I've used the same technique of creating animation keys for one element within the loader and then copy and pasting those keys to the other uh, elements within the loader and then offsetting them. So if all you wanted was the technique, there it is. If you want me to show you how to use the technique, let's look at an example and see how things are set up. Now, to understand the technique of um, how to copy and paste and offset keys, we need to understand how to create effective loops within Rive. Um, if you've used other animation software, it's likely very similar, um, so you can apply that knowledge as well. Now, to create a loop, um, we know that the keys at the beginning and end of our timeline need to be the exact same so that when our playhead um, gets to the end of the timeline and then jumps back to the beginning, the values there are the exact same. Now, it's really easy when we have one element moving up and down or we have all of our keys start and end at the beginning and end of the timeline. Um, but when we start doing um, things like making these ellipses move at different times, um, things get a little bit trickier. So. Um, as I said with those other uh, loading animations, the first thing that I did was create animation keys for one element within um, the loader. So in this case, I've added some keys to this first uh, ellipse here. And now what I wanna do is have all these other ellipses move as well. So I'm gonna copy all these keys here, paste them to the um, other ellipses there. And now we've got five ellipses moving up and down. Now they're doing it together, which doesn't really add any sort of interesting motion or anything like that. It would be more interesting if we could have them move at different times. Now to do that, the first thing we need to do is give ourselves some room on the timeline um, so that we can offset these keys away from uh, one another. We're also going to need a work area. So let me go ahead and enable the work area here. And we'll just get our keys here um, set up within that. Now, um, as I said, I want to offset the keys so that um, this ellipse moves first, then this one, this one, this one, and then finally this last ellipse. So to do that, I can grab all of my keys and just start moving them forward like so until we have sort of a cascading of keys along the timeline. Now, um, if you're reading this, you can see that the um, first ellipse is going to start animating, and then here's where the second one will, third, fourth, and then fifth. Now, that looks pretty good until we get to the end of our timeline, and it jumps back to the beginning. You can see we've got, um, we've got these, these ellipses that snap back to the top, which is not what we want. Now, the way we can fix this, there's two ways. As I said before, to create an effective loop, we need the value at the end of the um, work area or timeline to be the same as the beginning of the timeline so that when that playhead jumps, um, the values are the same and it, it looks seamless. Now, there's a couple ways we can fix this. The first way is placing our playhead at the end of the work area and going to the property that's changing, which is uh, the Y property here, keying that, and then moving it to the beginning. So now when we go from the end of the uh, timeline, uh, or work area, back to the beginning, um, that ellipse is staying the same. We can do the same thing with the other ellipses. I'm gonna just grab all of them, key their current Y position, and then move those keys back to the beginning. And now you can see that everything is in the right spot. Now, when we play this animation, you can see that the end of the animation, or actually the beginning of it right here, there is some weird motion going on. It doesn't match the motion and easing and everything um, of the rest of the animation. And that's because we've, we've changed up the timing between these keys here. 
Yes, they're starting in the same position, but the timing is off. And even if we change it to cubic easing, which is the same easing that we're using here, because that timing's off, it's gonna also introduce some strange motion. So you can see they kind of fling upwards at the end and it, does, it just doesn't look that smooth. Now, if you don't really care about that, then you don't have to worry about it. This is gonna work just fine. It at least makes the appearance of a smooth looping animation. Now, the way I recommend doing this is instead of offsetting your keys first, first you wanna um, get your initial motion, then copy that across to all the rest of your shapes, and then you can copy this loop that you've created, paste it at the beginning of the timeline, and now when you pan across the timeline, you'll see we have one loop, and then there's gonna be a pause because these keys are the same as these here, and then we'll have our second loop. Now, we can take all, this first loop here and drag it and overlap those two keys that were the, those two sets of keys that were the same. So now we have two loops back to back, just like so. We've got all the same easing here. Everything's got that just basic cubic easing on it. And then we can go in and offset the keys and have our ellipses animate at different times. And now when we play the animation, everything is running smoothly and we don't have any weird motion um, at the end because we've kept our timing between all of our keys the same and the easing is the same. So now um, we don't have keys that start right here at the beginning and then they have some weird easing that we'd have to try and go in and fix um, to keep the motion the same. So this technique here was applied to all three of the um, examples that I showed you before. So if you'd like, we can jump in, look at those examples, and I can show you how um, I built those. <clears throat> so we can start with this, um, this circle loader here. Um, what I've done for this one is animated the scale of this first ellipse and then applied that to all the other ellipses, copied the loop and then offset all the keys so you get something like this. And you can go in and adjust the timing. You can add pauses in there. In fact, I think I added a pause yep, here. So these two keys are the same so that it just sort of stays there for a second, I think. No, actually I added it right here. There's a pause at the end before going into the loop. Now, you could take that pause out, add one, add multiple. Um, it doesn't matter. I just made sure that I animated everything on this first ellipse and then copied that to all the rest of them, copy the loop, offset the keys. Now, I did the same thing on this box loader here, except instead of having all of the different um, uh, rectangles or boxes that I made animate at different times. I actually have them animating um, in lines. So we've got the first rectangle animates and then the second set of um, boxes animate together and then the third set of boxes animate together, so on and so forth until the end. Same technique, um, create the motion for the first box and then apply that to all the other boxes and then uh, copy and paste all the keys or the loops um, and then offset the ones that I want to animate at different times. <clears throat> now this loading animation or this um, DNA loading animation is a little bit different because I'm animating multiple properties at the same time, but the technique stays relatively the same. Let me actually uh, hide one of these lines and we can look at them individually. So the first thing I did was animate this blue line first and I animated the um, first ellipse. And uh, one thing to note is that I have my ellipses in order, in the order in which they're going to animate on um, the timeline, that's the order they are in the hierarchy so that when I animate them on the timeline here, it makes them a lot easier to actually offset and make sure they're getting put in the right position. So the first thing that I animated on this, let's go up to the top here, 
is the Y position. So for this, it's just moving up and down. And then there's also some scale uh, changes that's going on. Now, um, I animated the Y position and then animated the um, scale and then took that, um, took those scale properties, offset it, and then uh, copied this loop um, to the beginning of the timeline here. And then once I had that, I applied it to all of my ellipses that make up the line. So all of these, oops, all of these. And then once I had that, then I could offset all of the, um, all of the different ellipses away from each other to get this nice um, constant motion. Now, one thing that you have to keep in mind, uh, especially on something like this, this requires really precise timing. And when you start offsetting your keys, you'll notice that uh, the keys sort of snap to the timeline. So I made sure that um, as I was offsetting everything, I offset it the same amount every time. So as I was dragging it forward, I was counting one, two, three, four, five, and then I would grab the next, um, or I would deselect that one and then grab the next set and then count one, two, three, four, five, and did that all the way across. So then once I got this blue line done, then I did the pink line. And for this, I had to start it in the opposite position. I couldn't use all the same keys for this as I did for the top line because the bottom line starts down and then moves up and then goes back down. And then the scaling is different too. It starts smaller, grows larger, and then goes back down to smaller. Um, but I use the same, um, the same steps essentially. So that's going to be it for this video. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, make sure you leave us a comment on the video and we'll try to get back to those as quickly as possible. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving us a thumbs up. Um, if you want to see more content, um, we've got a lot more videos coming out soon. We've got a lot of um, new functionality coming to Rive um, that we want to show you how to use. So if you want to stay up to date on all that, um, consider subscribing so that you get a notification um, whenever we have a new video available. So um, I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one.